Glory to God. Jehovah Jireh. We serve a good God. Amen? I say it a lot. I'm going to say it more. I'm not going to quit saying it because we serve a good God. Amen? Sometimes I don't. I think we say that and we don't realize just how good He is. Amen? Um, we'll, we'll look for everything, every reason under the sun why He wouldn't be good to us. And you can't find enough reasons. You can't. You can't find... He's good to people that don't deserve to be good to. (laughs) That's how good He is. He's just so good, He's good all the time. To people that don't even know Him, He's good. Right? It still rains where they live. They still have air to breathe. Right? They still have food. He's good to people everywhere all the time. That's the God we serve. Amen? Amen? That's the God we serve. That's the God we're always going to, we're going to talk about. We're going to let Him know that we know He's good, right? We're going to let other people know that He is good. And His idea of good is just like your idea of good. Right? It's not I'll make you sick to teach you something good. That's not good. No. No. Right? Any, anybody ever learned from a bad experience? Sure you have. You reckon that was God's will or yours? Right? I mean, I'm glad I learned, but I'd rather learn by him just saying, don't do that. Yeah. Right? Wouldn't it just be easier to say, hey, don't touch that stove, it's hot. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> After you get the burn ointment off your hand, you say, oh, man, I'll never do that again. <laughs> sure you won't. You could have you learned that just as easy by hearing, don't do that. Yeah. Amen? Yes, Glory to God. But we're growing up, right? We're coming up. We're, we're seeing His Word. Um, we're going to be just like our Father. Amen? You know, I, we teach a little bit on Wednesday nights, and we teach and we're going to look at some of these verses. But, you know, I remember when I was growing up, sometimes my mom said, you're being just like your dad, and it was a good thing. And sometimes she'd say, you're acting just like your dad. And it wasn't such a good thing. Right? Right? <laughs> But when you say that and you're talking about God, right? How how often do you want people to say that about you then? You are acting just like your father. I like that. Say that about me all you want and more. Amen? Because that's who we want to act like. That's who He's made us to be. Amen? We're the light of the world. Glory to God. Open your Bibles to Matthew 5. We'll start there. You've got people looking for answers. You know, there's people in here tonight that are, that are believing for healing, they're believing for deliverance, they're believing for answers in their lives, their, their relationships, their children, they're, they're believing for different things. And uh, you know, some people say, well, you, you need to teach a message on healing, you need to teach a message on prosperity. You need, you need to, Jesus taught this. This is Jesus' message. If you look in Matthew 5 through about 7 something, that's a message. He was preaching that. That's what he preached. Right? And after he got done preaching that, you know what he did? Healed people. People got delivered. Right? It's the Word of God that does the work. And and it's it's His Word working in our lives, changing us to be an extension of His Word. Amen? Because as we learn who He is and His characteristics, we become more like Him. We have His characteristics in us. We can yield to those at any time. Right? Right? But we also have these other characteristics that try to crop their head up every now and then that we're not going to have, right? Because we're born again, so those characteristics died when we did. Glory to God. So we we want to be who God's made us to be. And one of the first things that He said we were in Matthew 5.14... He said, you are the light of the world. We are the light. We should always be the leader in what's going on, never the follower. We should be the standout. We should never be blended. Amen? If we get in a crowd of people, we should stand out. We should stand out if they're afraid, we're not. We should stand out if they're sick, we're well. We should stand out. We we have ability, we have resource. We should stand out. 
we should stand out just for peace and joy. Because I don't know if you've been in a crowd of people in the world lately, but they ain't got a whole bunch of that. Huh? They, they, <laughs> you get in a, you get in a uh, elevator with five or six people and start being happy, <laughs> they're going to say, you see people moving over to the corners. You know, I do some hospital visits, and you walk in there with hope. Some people get away from him. Some people will snuggle right close to you, though. You walk in places with hope and peace, and you'll, you'll attract people that are looking for it. Amen? You walk in with the knowledge of God's goodness and get around people, they'll be drawn to you. People want to believe in a good God. They've been lied to for so many years. They've been religion and the world, not even religion, just the world, the news, telling people that God's bad and they don't even know Him. Right? I mean, that'd be like somebody telling me Rick's bad. I've known Rick too many years. He's only half bad. (laughs) No, he's a pretty good guy, actually. You know, if somebody came up to me and said, man, Rick, Rick just stole all the money out of his company and bought a plane ticket to Hawaii and left and, and said he don't care anymore, I'd say no. I said, you've got the wrong person. Why? Because I know him. That's what we say about God. When people say, well, God did this or God did that, unless it's good and it's backed up by His Word, we're not believing it. I don't care if you tell me you're an, a prophet, apostle, what you tell me you are if it's not good and backed up by His Word. I'm not going for it. My God is a good God. And when things don't look good, He'll find a way to make it good. Right? The only way I can not have it good is to not walk in the good He's got. Right? Run from it. Like Jonah. Jonah. <laughs> Glory to God. We're the light of the world. We should shine. Let me see my little flashlight. Look at look at that, man. I got it going on tonight. I'm like well, I'm like Miss Phyllis now. I got props. <laughs> Amen. Now, you, can you guys see me shining that light into that light? No, you can't, because light shined into light makes no difference. Amen? We're the light of the world. Amen? We can't be separating ourselves from the world or you can't lead the world. Amen? We lead the world because we're the light of the world. The light's not just there. We talked about this a few Wednesday nights ago. Light's not there to show everybody's flaws. It's to show everybody the way. Amen? It's to show... I don't want some, I don't want to say... Okay, let's see all your flaws. Oh yeah, you got a bump there, a bruise there, you did this, you did that. Oh man, I don't know if you can make it. No! I want to say, look here. You had some bumps and bruises? Let me shine you away. Let me show you where to go. Let me take you where you ought to be. Amen? That's what light does. That's what it's for. It's not to condemn and judge people with. Amen? It's to shine and lead people. We're the light of the world. We're salt. We're light. Amen? What if you take salt and throw it in a pile of salt? What happens to it? It's gone. It has no value. It's salt on salt. Man, you take it and put it on a piece of hamburger and grill it? Yeah! You add to it. Amen? <laughs> you, can, you can make some stuff taste way better sometimes. I know some people don't like salt. Some people don't like to jog two miles either. <laughs> One. Hey, I have jogged two twice now, by the way. We're light and we're salt. We are are to be the leaders. We are a city that is set on a hill and it cannot be hidden. We're not to be hidden. We are to stand out in everything we do. We should not stand out because we're spooky. You know? You know, when, when everybody else is sitting around and you're sitting over here chanting... And, pray, and acting like you're praying, oh Lord, and everybody else having fun, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. No! No, that's just spooky. No, no. Let's get in and show them how good our God is, how, how well balanced we are because of our good God. We don't have to do things the way they have. We don't have to be afraid of tomorrow. 
if everything went as bad as it could go, we're going to heaven. So we are right now in the worst position of our lives. Right now. This is as bad as it gets for us. Glory to God. And this is good. But it's nothing like what we'll have. We're the light of the world. We're a city on a hill that can't be hidden. Amen? So we can't separate ourselves. Amen? Right? Right? It's great to serve the church. Don't get me wrong. You need to serve in the church. You need to care about God's things. But when you walk out of the church, (laughs) what are you doing then? What are you doing then? That's when your light needs to be the brightest. In church, everybody's got a light. It's bright here. Right? It's real bright here. Everybody got a light. Amen? When you leave here, you're going into a dark world. Does that mean you've got to turn your light out? No. no. What's, what's the next verse say? Next verse says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. You guys remember the old song? Hide it under a bushel. Oh, no. I'm going to let it shine. Yeah? Everybody knows that. Sing in Bible school, right? Then you had your red, red Kool-Aid and your cookies. Right? Glory to God, and you learned that song. And now it has great value to you, doesn't it? Because we're not going to hide it under a bush. We're not going to put our light away. We're going to shine it as bright as we can for all the world to see. When God does something good for us, we're going to let Him see. Amen? We're, when, when something bad tries to happen to us, we're going to let the goodness of God handle it for us. We're going to let His grace and His ability in us take care of us. Amen? And things that can't happen for other people will happen for us. We'll be healed. We'll be well. We'll be prosperous. And we'll act just like our Father. And you know what? Just acting like Him alone will make you stand out. Amen? Will it not? Why? God's good to, good to mean people. People in the world ain't good to mean people. People in the world ain't good to nice people. Are they? Because well, they're not happy. And, and you know, you might find a, a fairly nice person, and I'm not saying all the people, but if you don't know Jesus, you don't have true peace. You don't have true joy. You don't have grace. Right? You don't have God's ability in you to overcome every evil tendency. Right? You don't have these things. But if you know God, you can walk in this world in a confidence that other people can't. You can walk in this world and it doesn't matter what's going on. You can say, none of these things move me. What? Stock market's down? What? What? They're not giving loans? Huh? Business isn't good? Huh? What? The, the, The swine flu? The... I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter what they come up with. They're not going to come up with enough. Did I lose my mic? They're not going to come up with enough to overcome God's grace. It's not going to happen. No, more good news, you're not going to come up with enough sin to overcome God's grace. Amen? Amen? You know the other thing God does? He doesn't judge people. <laughs> he doesn't. Sin's already been judged. Sin is sin. See, what we have a tendency to do is judge the person that sinned. Right. The sin's already judged. Right. We don't want to do that, do we? No. We're like our Father. That's right. Our Father gave Jesus so they wouldn't have to be judged. Amen? And as long as they're on this earth, and as long as they're breathing, they have the opportunity to receive grace. As long as they're here. And my job is to believe for them. Amen. That's it. My, my job is to believe no matter what's going on in anybody's life, God's best can still happen. That's your job. That's my job. That's a great job. Because you're believing in something that's never lost or ever failed. Right? That's, it's an easy job. Right? It's kind of like what we just talked about in the offering. Sow, sleep, rise, reap. Right? All we got to do is believe in a finished work. We've got to believe in the work of the cross. We've got to believe in the resurrection from the dead. We've got to believe in the goodness of God for others. You've got it. You're all sitting here saved. Amen? Healed? You're saved. You're healed. Amen? 
So we let our light shine. We let people know that we're the saved of the Lord. We're the healed of the Lord. We're the blessed of the Lord. We have His goodness in us to work towards you. Amen? So when I leave here, I'm not just leaving here and say, okay, I did my good work. I left the church. I helped vacuum. I waved cars in the parking lot. No, your work's just begun. That was serving the Lord there. That's easy. He's an easy boss. Right. Now it's time to go out and shine your light in the world and be, some, be, be a light in a dark place. Amen? Anybody can be a light in a light place. Amen? We want to shine our light in the world. That's what verse 16 says. It says, Let your light so, so shine before men. Right? Not before the church. Not before God. Because you're not going to impress Him. Right? <laughs> Right? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. What does shine in your light do? The end result of your light shining glorifies God. Why? Because you do it His way. Lots of people try to shine their own light. You've got thousands of people, thousands of rich men out there that give and give and give. And you know what they do? They say, okay, put my name on it. Give me a news article, right? What, what happened every time Jesus did something great? It says they glorified the God of Israel. They glorified the Lord. It never says they glorified Jesus. Why? Because His good works and His light pointed to the Father. He never pointed at Himself. He wasn't looking for Himself. He was doing it under God's direction for God's glory and God's way. Amen? He walked through this world in a way that other people didn't. It's what made him different. When he went places, people said, what's different about him? What was different is he was like God. The fact is, in Hebrews, it says he was the express image of God on the earth. So he was just like God. Amen? So let's see what just like God is. Look on, uh, or how to be just like God. How about that? Romans eight fourteen. You guys okay tonight? Are you cold? That's good because I turned the air conditioner up. Well, because I'm the only person here that could say turn the air conditioner. I thought that would be kind of rude in the middle of service. Glory to God. The Lord's helping us. He's going to keep helping us. Amen. Romans eight fourteen, King James Version. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, people have taken that verse and say, yeah, I've got to have my direction from the Lord. I've got to know where I'm going. I, got, I need to know my next step. I need, and that's great because that's what it means. Yes, you can get direction for this verse. But to be led by the Lord means to act like Him. Amen? Not just to go where He sends you, but to be who He is when you're there. Amen? If you're led by the Lord in certain situations, you'll forgive where you don't want to. <laughs> you'll have mercy when you don't want to. Why? Because you're led by His Spirit. And His Spirit is merciful. His Spirit is loving. His Spirit is kind. His, and you're led by the Spirit of God. It doesn't just take you where you're going. It gives you the ability to, do, to have His characteristics while you're there. You could go exactly where He tells you to go, never act like Him, and make a big mess. Right? Couldn't you? Well, I know you could. I've done it. <laughs> I'm glad you guys haven't. So here, here's what you do. You learn from my mistake. I am a big proponent of learning by others' mistakes. So let me tell you, I've done that. It's not good. Do something else. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. Do it a different way. Right? What you want to do is you want to go where He sends you and then be who He's made you to be while you're there. Amen? You want to be a light. He didn't send you there just to be standing there saying, well, this is good. Okay, God, where do I go next? Be a light. Expect to be used everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. The fact is, it was kind of neat. I was uh, flying home last night, and uh, they shipped me out commercial. said, forget you. 
<laughs> but I was flying home last night and I prayed before I left. I said, Lord, you know, I'm flying in. This, this is your will. I'm flying out. Give me something to do. You know, show me what I'm supposed to do while I'm doing this. I sat right next to a guy on the way here to Branson and we talked about Jesus all the way home. He had been directed to move away from a job and he was excited and I encouraged him. And it was really cool because you know how I could encourage him? Because I've watched a lot of us, a lot of you, move from where he's moving into God's will. And it was exciting. And I was able to encourage him that others had done it. And it's and God's faithful. And it was so cool. For an hour and 20 minutes, we had said, while I'm sitting there doing, doing my lesson on my computer, he's looking over and reading the Bible off my thing. And he says, what do you do? (laughs) Glory to God. And what a nice man he was. But God gave me the ability to encourage a brother. Now, it could have been somebody that didn't know Jesus. I don't know. But you don't know where you're going. It will still be in a light where he needed some more light. Right? It's good to be a light to your brothers when they need it. We need to encourage one another. It says in the Bible, encourage one another. Right? I don't quit on people. Do you guys? Don't quit on people. I don't care how far gone you think their situation is. Stay with them. You stay with them. Amen? It's important because people say, and I know I've talked about this a little bit before, but it's too easy to quit on people because you say, oh, they're never going to get it. Just, I just hope this happens and it gets it over with so we don't have to deal with it anymore. That's not going to help. That's, not, it's just, that's like giving somebody money to get them to go away. That, that's not, you didn't help them. Right. Amen? Stick with them. Hook your faith there if they're never in faith. Because one day, they may wake up and say, wait a second, I believe God. This can happen. Nothing's, po- nothing's impossible with God. This can happen. And your faith's still there. All they got to do is hook on. Amen? Amen? We don't want to quit on people. We're the light of the world. Jesus has never quit on anybody. He he, he died and he had no other brothers when he died for everyone. But by faith, he believed for lots of them. And he's got more and more and more every day. Amen. Amen. He was the firstborn of many brethren. And now he's got lots and lots of family and more coming in. Why? Because he had faith. He stepped out and he died for the world. Glory to God. And by faith, he believed that we would receive. He believed that I would receive Jesus someday. That I would receive what he did for me someday. That's faith. Because I'll guarantee it didn't look like it. (laughs) Right? Look like it for y'all all all the time? No, no. (laughs) Glory to God. He still died for me while I was yet his enemy. That's what God does. Jesus had every characteristic and displayed every characteristic of God while He was here on the earth. It says that He walked, that He grew in wisdom, right? And, and the grace of God was upon His life. Grace. You reckon if Jesus needed grace, you need grace to walk in this world? Yeah, I, <laughs> I need, I, I want grace. Amen? I want grace right now. Glory to God. Grace is what gives us the ability to do the things and His characteristics. Amen? Grace is His characteristics in you and His ability in you. Glory to God. I want that grace in my life. If we're led by the Spirit, we'll walk in His characteristics. Why? You're led by His Spirit. His Spirit has all His his characteristics. Right? Guess what? Your Spirit has all your characteristics. (laughs) the unborn spirit has the unborn characteristics the born again spirit has the ability to have all of God's characteristics glory to God you can do things that the world can't do you want to know the biggest thing you can do love the world can't do that they have a form of love but it's not godly love it's not real it has an end and it fails Real love doesn't fail. It doesn't quit on people. It doesn't give up. It loves. That's the first thing. Do you want to see some other abilities you have? Well, I'll tell you what. We'll go back. We'll we'll get to those in a minute. Go to Galatians 5. Galatians 5. 
Galatians 5, 16. King James Version. I'm going to switch to the NIV in verse 19 just so I can read it. <laughs> you ever read the King James sometimes? Ye they thou thus durst. What's a durst? Yeah, you guys know what a durst is? You know, I'm sure everybody understood that back in the King's day, but here in Hillbilly Holler, <laughs> Dave don't get it sometimes. Amen? Galatians 5.16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, people look at the lust of the flesh and they take lust and they take it all over into sexual stuff and that's not just what the flesh lusts to do. The flesh lusts to have its own way. Whatever its way is at the time, that's what it wants. That's its lust, that's what it wants, whatever its way is. It's selfish, it's self-motivated, it's about itself, it thinks about me and it really likes I. (laughs) Amen? That's what the flesh is about. But if you walk in the Spirit, why won't you fulfill the lust of the flesh? Because you'll walk in God's characteristics, God's ways, God's power, God's love. Amen? God's, yes, through the Spirit. We can walk on a higher level than others. We can react and act in situations the way other people cannot. God did not give us any undoable assignments. Undoable. Is that a word? Undoable. It's a new word. Undoable. He didn't give you any assignments that can't be done for those who don't understand hillbilly. (sighs) Amen? He didn't. If He said we can do it in His Word and He asked us to do it, then we can do it. Not in the flesh, though. We can do it by the Spirit. By walking in the Spirit. That's how we do all things. It says, uh, go to Galatians 5, uh, 19, put it up in the NIV. It says, the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft. Oh, wait a second, how to throw these in there? They must not belong. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension. You know, people... They look at these verses, they get past, oh, I'm okay on sexual immorality and impurity, so I must be okay. Well, what about those other ones? Anybody ever sown some strife? I have. Don't do it. doesn't work. It's not good. Okay? You guys haven't? So here, learn, learn from Dave again. All right? Jealousy. Anybody ever been jealous? Uh-huh. Fit, had a fit? You drove in Branson very much. You have had a fit. Amen? Or at least had opportunity and didn't yield to it. Glory to God for you. Amen? Selfish ambition. Anybody ever tried to get something for theirself? Huh? Did something that was to manipulate them for them. You know, manipulating a person or a situation that made it good for them or made them shine. Amen? See, that's what the world's trying to do. They're trying to make things happen to make them shine so you'll see them. We want to shine so you'll see God. Our light points to one thing. It points to God. Amen? We're not trying to be the light. We're, we're trying to be the light to the world through Him. Amen? And that's what we're going to be. Amen? But we, we gotta, not only can you not do the first three or four, you can't do the middle either. Amen? But what he's really saying here, go back up to the verse, he's saying if you'll walk in the Spirit, you won't do these. Right? Why? Because they're not godly characteristics. And he goes on to tell you about the godly characteristics in verse 22. Let's look at some godly characteristics. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. See anything you wouldn't like in your life yet? Why do you you reckon we fight so hard not not to do what God says? Well, you guys haven't done that. Don't do that either. It's not good. Okay? One more thing that I have done. Don't do it. Right? Go on to verse 23. Gentleness and self-control. And I like this. Against all those 
There's no law. You can do those all you want. There's no, they won't give you a ticket. They won't put you in jail. They won't stop you. You know the world won't even stop you from doing those things. Why? Because they want you to do them. But why, why does He put them in here? Because they stand out. These other things don't stand out. You know why you don't notice them as much? Because everybody's doing it. It's a, you know, you, you won't notice a whole bunch of uh, discord and jealousy if everybody's doing it. Right? But you'll stand out in the world if you're doing this. Right? And, and these are fruits of the Spirit. Right? These are things that produce out of His Spirit. That doesn't mean you've got to produce. We don't, that's, see, that's the thing. We're saying, oh, I can't be patient. You don't have to be. He is. And He'll be patient through you. You're not the one. You don't have to sit there and say, I'm going to produce patience here. Patience, patience. Oh, if I could just get some, Here comes some peace. You ever seen an apple tree? I'm going to make apples if it's the last thing I do. No, that's just what they do. That's what the Spirit does. It produces these things. Glory to God. And if we walk in it, these are things we'll do and have. Amen? We won't have to make them happen. They will happen. Glory to God. It, it, it's, not, it's not make it happen. It's do this and it will. Period. So, the one thing we do know is if it's not happening, I'm just saying. Well, what if it's not happening? In my life, if it's not happening, then I'm not doing it. Right? It's as simple as that. Right? In your life, it would be the same, but you will never do that because you've heard that I did and it's not good. Right? Glory to God. Right? So we're going to produce fruit. Right? All by ourselves because we have the Spirit of God and we're going to walk in it. It's not going to take any work. You can't work for this to happen. Right? It just does because that's what happens. Amen? Look, go back to Matthew 5. Or were we in Matthew 5? We'll go there anyway. We were close to it. Look at verse 44 this time. Let's look at some more stuff you can't do. But now you can. Amen? We're a light. We've got to stand out. To do things to stand out, you've got to be who God's made you to be. Amen? i got to be who God's made me to be. I remember the first time I read this verse. I said, I don't see how. I'm going to say that was a lot of years ago, but I'm like, I had some people I didn't like, and I'm like, I don't love them. Anybody ever else felt that way? I mean, I'm serious. I read the first line of this verse, and it says, and this is Jesus. This is His message for the day. Okay? And He's preaching to everybody that heard, hate your enemies, love your brother. Right. Oh, and all of a sudden, Jesus goes a whole different direction on them. <laughs> he says, hey... I say, love your enemies. Well, they, he lost half the crowd probably right there. Right? <laughs> no, probably not. He's a good preacher. He said, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, the key to this is he wasn't telling you to do it because he tells you to do it. Amen. You guys get that? We don't do things for God just because He tells you to do them. That's great to be obedient, but to give them true value, you've got to do them because you truly love your enemy. You can't make yourself love your enemy. You've got to use the love of God to love them with because you don't have love for them. You have to yield to something greater than you for this to happen. Amen? And to have any value. Now, you could walk over there and say, Oh, Lord, I pray for Joe. He's a jerk, but man, I pray for him, Lord. Help him, whatever you can do for him. I really don't care. Just keep him away from me. <laughs> and say, hey, I prayed for my enemies today. <laughs> that ain't going to work out. Is it? No, because you've got to love him first. You can't just pray for him. You've got to love him. And guess what? You can. It's a characteristic of the Spirit of God. And if you walk by that Spirit, you will walk in that love and you will love people that you don't even want to love. Really? 
Why? Because you'll see Him differently. Your vision will change. Because you'll say what Jesus said. They're sheep without a shepherd. Right? They're lost and dying in the world. They don't know that there's a God that loves them. They don't know how good a guy I am and that they shouldn't be mean to me. That's right. right? Yes, sir. You'll change the way you think. Yeah. Glory to God. And by changing the way you think and thinking His way because you're using the Spirit of God to think with now, right? You've quit allowing the flesh to do your thinking for you. Right? right. We do it. Okay, one more thing that I've done that y'all have not. Don't do it. Don't let your flesh do the thinking, your feelings, your emotion, your senses. They mean nothing. Right? right. Yeah. If, if you get up in the morning and your flesh says you feel this way, say, I didn't ask. <laughs> right? right? I don't feel like being good to people today. Well, it's good news for you, Dave. I didn't ask you if you felt like it. That's what you're going to do. Right? If we, did, if we went by our feelings, most of us would have to say the sinner's prayer every day. Right? Because we wouldn't wake up feeling saved, would we? I don't feel very saved today. I better go to Romans 10. No, we're saved every day. Our feelings have no bearing on it. And we have the ability to be led and walk in His Spirit and, and live by His characteristics, doing His things Right? Qualifying situations and circumstances by His Word and by what He would do. Amen? Because He wouldn't hate His enemy. He died for His enemies. Right? Is that love? While I was yet His enemy, Christ died for me? Now that's love. That's called loving your enemies. And before He died, He prayed for all of us. Every one of us in John 17, He prayed for us before He died for us. So he, he died for us while we were His enemies, so He loved us. He prayed for us while we were despitefully using Him. He doesn't tell you to do something He hasn't already done. Glory to God. We serve a good God, don't we? Am I making Him chase me too hard? Glory to God. Bless them that curse you. Does any of this sound good to you guys in the flesh? Yes. Sounds good in your spirit though, doesn't it? Yes. It's going to make you stand out too. People don't bless people that curse them. <laughs> right? Yeah, I was driving, I, forget, I think we were in St. Louis. and You know, unfortunately, I was driving a little bit like a tourist because I was lost. <laughs> and somebody came up behind me and <laughs> passed by me and Waved at me with the wrong finger. I'm sure it was a mistake. I'm sure it was a big mistake. But I can honestly tell you that I did not feel like blessing them at the time. No. And in fact, I'm not going to honestly tell you that I did bless them, did I? I didn't get mad. I didn't call them names. But I didn't bless them. But it was probably as close as I could come at the time because I was like, okay, don't do that. There's one more thing that you can do. Okay? But a very good example of blessing somebody that curses you. You know? Because really, and I think we did after I got my thoughts out of the way, we prayed for them. We said, Lord, they must be in a hurry. They must have some bad stuff going on in their life today. Worse than that, they must not know you. Amen? I don't remember exactly what we prayed, but I do know we prayed for them. I remember them getting off the off ramp and me thinking, well, I'm glad they went that way. <laughs> Amen? What? what you know? <laughs> well, we did it. We'll get better. Amen? Because I do have God's characteristics on the inside of me. And I do intend to yield to them easier and easier and easier every day. You know one thing that will never happen if you got God's characteristics inside of you? Nothing will offend you. Amen. Right. Nothing. It doesn't matter what people... That's how you can bless people that curse you. Because they can't offend you. I mean, and you will look crazy to people. I mean, they just did something horrible to you and you smile at them and say, Man, God loves you. <laughs> you know? Or that waitress that was mean to you at your table and you left her a $20 tip. 
Why'd you do that? Because she must be having a bad day. I'm not, why would I want to assume that everybody hates Dave today? We could just, that waitress is me to me, my boss is me to me, I haven't had a good day. I'm not tipping her nothing, I'm leaving her a penny. Just so she'll know I didn't forget to leave a tip. Some of y'all have done that, haven't you? Okay, no more, that's not good, don't do that anymore. See, we're getting, we're getting rid of a lot of things right now, aren't we? Glory to God. Right? Because we're going to do this. Why? This makes us stand out. Yes. Glory to I want to stand out. Yes. I want to be a light in a dark place. I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to be under a bushel. I don't want to flicker out before I leave the church doors. Right. Yeah, it's like, yeah, some people in there, oh, glory to God, blessed to be a blessing, brother. Oh, yes, it's such a nice day. They walk out the door. Where's my car? I know I parked around here somewhere. Why won't they come pick me up now? I've been waiting on a cart for an hour. What is going on here? Walk back into the information booth. I've been waiting on a cart. I don't know where they are. I know they do such a fine job, too, and they just must have missed me this time. I'm not talking about acting. I'm talking about being. Amen? Being. And we can do it. We can walk out these church doors with the same smile we walked in with, and we can live a life that makes a difference everywhere we go. Glory to God. That's being a light. And you're going to have to be peculiar to do it. You're going to have to be. Because you're going to stand out. Why? Because you're going to bless people that curse you. You're going to pray for people who despitefully use you. Right? Right? That's what we're going to do. What's He say you'll be if you do these things? Verse 45, that you may be children of your Father which is in heaven. Why? Because then it tells you what He's like. Just what we talked about earlier. He makes the sun to rise on the evil and the good. Guess what? They can get a tan just like you. Amen? Their pool can warm up. Their grass can grow. Their flowers can grow. Why? He's believing for them. God's not looking to withhold things from people. Amen? Right? You know, that's a, that's a tradition that's been started in some circles. I'm not going to mention any. You know, I, when I went to a different church, God had me teach a lot on tradition and doing, not doing things in tradition. And as I've changed churches, I just find there's different traditions. Yeah. You know, a lot of times people of faith will always spend all their time looking for why something's not happening or why it's not happening the way they want it to. You should spend all your time believing God's Word. Right? If you're looking for sources of evil, you know, it's like somebody saying, I know something's wrong with this car. Just because it's running doesn't mean something's not wrong with it. Well, by the time you're done taking it apart, there will be something wrong with it. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Stop that. Stop that. Believe in His mercy. Yeah. Lean on His grace. Yes. Believe in His love. He'll heal you, then show you how you got sick. He won't wait <laughs> till you get it to get you well. Right? He's just that good. That's the God I serve. That's the God I serve. Is it the God you serve? He's just that good. He loved you while you were His enemy. You don't think He'd healed you while you weren't doing everything just perfect? Especially if you don't know it. If you're sitting there looking for it, well, what, do you think He's hiding it from you? Well, if I just get Him to find it, oh, let me put it over here today, let me put it over here today. Isn't this fun to watch Him be sick? No! He's putting it up on a pedestal for you. He says, get well. Get healed. Quit looking. Right? Is that what it says in 1 Peter 2.24? It says, By His stripes you were healed, lest you got sin in your life. I think the verse before it says He bore your sins. Amen? On a tree. It's too much sin consciousness, not enough of love consciousness. 
I'm not saying go out and sin and expect God to do things in your life. You go out and sin expecting it, saying, well, He'll do it anyway. No, <laughs> that's not the same thing we're talking about. Amen. If you have to look for it, you don't see it. Amen? <laughs> if you don't have to look for it, you've already seen it. It's two different things, right? We're clear on that? I've done them both. Again, I'll tell you, neither work. Stop it. Isn't it good to use me as an example so you all don't have to do it? And I'm not in condemnation. I'm free. Glory to God. I'm real free. Thank you, Lord. That you may be children of your Father which is in heaven, for He makes the sun to rise on the evil and the good. Why? He loves them just like He loves you. Do you know that the worst person right now that you can think of in your mind, I don't care who it is, He loves them just as much as He loves you? Amen. You know? <laughs> some, some of you are okay with that. Some of you are like, what? Because, <laughs> I mean, we know some people that have done some pretty rough things. Guess what? They could live next door to you in heaven. <laughs> Might as well start practicing down here, huh? That's why God put it in the book. Love your enemies. <laughs> they may be your enemy here, next door neighbor in heaven. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> well, I was just trying to think of people I don't want to live next to. You know? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. God's good and He withholds judgment. He doesn't try to find a place to judge you. He's withholding. He's, it says mercy triumphs over judgment. In other words, no matter what, He's not looking for a reason to judge you. Right? He's looking for a reason to have mercy on you. Which, it's mercy, so He needs very little reason, right? I need lots of it. Glory to God. Verse 46, For if you love them which love you, what reward do you have? In other words, if, you, if you're at peace in a peaceful situation, what good's that? Everybody's at peace in a peaceful situation. Right? It's the person that can have peace in the storm that makes a difference. It's the person that's on the boat when it's going down. Did you, did you ever notice that story that Brother Moore was talking about? I don't know, it was last week, I think, where Paul was on the boat and he's saying, Fear not! And when he told them to eat, they actually ate. They'd probably been sick for days. But why did they eat? Because Paul had faith. Paul stood up there with the characteristics of God. And said, oh, don't be afraid. You're not going to lose your life. The boat's a goner. But you're going to make it. Yes. You know what? I'm guessing they didn't care anything about that boat. But they sure were glad to hear Paul say, fear not. Why? He was a light. He stood up there and he, and he took the characteristics of God first. He wasn't afraid. Why? He had a word. Right? He had a word. That's what he had. Right? You got a word? Don't be afraid then. You're going to make it. You're going to come through. You're going to overcome. You're going to have what you thought you'd never have. Right? And more. And just as Brother Moore said last week, it's going to be better. Better than it's ever been. Doesn't matter. That's the word to hook on to. Amen? Grab hold of that. Where to God. That's what we're going to have. If you love them which love you, that's real easy. Even in your own house, if people are acting in love towards you, it's really nice in your house, but somebody gets a little snappy, <laughs> that doesn't happen in your house, does it? <laughs> no? Well, you know what? Maybe Kim didn't have a good day that day. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to keep walking this way, by the way. <laughs> Glory to God. Maybe Dave didn't have a good day that day. Is it going to help me to snap back at me or to love me? Love me. Right? You know, because what happens is, why'd you do that? Because I wanted to. Ah, ah, ah. He fixed nothing. Right? What if what it said? Hey, why'd you do that? Said, I don't know, you know. I'm sorry. How about a hug? <laughs> don't do that, by the way. It doesn't help. <laughs> Wrong time to ask how about a hug. 
Don't patronize me. <laughs> Keep walking in love. Amen? And get through it in love. But if you're both fighting, what do you end up in two different rooms? Somebody's doing ironing, somebody's watching a football game. <laughs> this sounds way too familiar. Huh? Do I know this story too well? Love fixes it, though. You know what? Love refuses to not let it be fixed. Does that make sense? Yes. It does. The love of God in you will refuse to not let it be fixed. Right? It won't let you sit there and sulk. Love of God will not let you sit and sulk. People who sit and sulk are not walking in the Spirit. Wow. It's true. I've sat and sulked, and I can tell you right now, it wasn't spiritual at all. What do you do? I can't believe they would do that to me. I've done this and I've done that and I've poured out my heart and I work 80 hours. And oh, oh. What you need to do is step back from yourself and say, hey, you shut up. Yeah. <laughs> right? You need to look at yourself, step back and say, you are a sissy and a whiny baby. Shut up. <laughs> get over it, get up, and get out. Yeah, right. Amen? And walk in the Spirit because you're not being a light to anybody. You're not helping, you're hurting. Amen? When we yield to that, right, we're not helping anything. You can't yield to those things. Glory to God. Verse 47, it says, If you salute, brethren only. Now he's he's getting in the church, isn't he? Huh? Well, what if if that is? Is Is it good to just be to yourself? Is it just be... I'm not of this world, brother. Yeah, and you're barely in it, too. (laughs) You're in this world. You may not be of it, but you need to take what you're not of and take what you do have and get in the game. Get your head in the game. Get to playing. Get to winning. Get to get to taking taking back stuff that the devil's tried to take. We're in this game to win. And we're not quitting till we do. That's right. Amen? Amen? We're not planning on losing. we got no plan. To, God's already won. Get your head where it belongs. Right? Get your heart in control. Heart. Not your feelings, your heart. Your heart knows what God knows. Your heart is what can lead you. It's what can take you the right direction every time. The fruit of the Spirit born in the heart. Amen? Right? Glory to God. Lord's helping us. Lord is helping us. So we're not just going to salute our brethren, right? Right? That's important, guys. This, you know, people take one of these little sentences in here. You know, it's too easy for the church to get in the church. And they call the church and they, they don't associate with anyone outside the church. And I can't do business with you if you're not in the church. Well, pretty soon you're going to be a cult, not a church. Okay? I, I'll do business with, with a sinner purposely. I will. Purposely. Well, what if he rips you off? Well, what if he does and then he goes to heaven? And I'm not planning on getting ripped off either. Glory to God. You didn't see... Did, did Jesus go to the church people when he came? No, he went and ate with the publicans and the tax collectors. People that nobody liked. Oh, you don't like them? That's where I'm going. I mean, that ought to be a good sign for you to where to go. Right? If the religious folk don't like them, hang out with them. That's what Jesus did. I'm just saying. Verse 48. Be ye perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. What's he saying? Be like me. Be like God. Right? Walk in, walk in my grace. Walk in the characteristics of God. Be led by the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Produce the fruits of the Spirit in every situation that you're in. Right? I'll guarantee if you go back to those fruits, every one of them will apply to whatever situation you're in. I don't care what it is. There is an answer for every situation through the Spirit of God. Right? And if we'll yield to it, we'll have those answers. Amen? 
Glory to God. You got to have singleness of vision, though, right? Can't have two answers. One answer, right? Look at Luke, uh, Luke thirty, Luke six thirty-five. Same, same thing in a different book, but he he goes a little further with some of it. In the uh, King James. It says, be good to your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. Well, that'll make you stand out. Huh? Yeah. It will. You will be a light. If you do these things, you will be a light because people say, why'd you do that? You know, God just loved you and told, you want, told, told me to do it for you. Amen. Right? Amen. But see, you don't want... You know, if you look back at Matthew, which we're not going to, but he goes through a whole list of things you shouldn't do to be seen. You shouldn't fast to be seen. You shouldn't pray to be seen. What he, what he really should have said, don't do anything for you to be seen. Right? Because that's the wrong reason. Wrong heart. Won't help. Won't, won't, right? It's not a light. Right? It shines to you. It doesn't glorify God. We want to glorify God. He said, and, and you shall be children of the highest. For he's kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. How many of you feel like being kind to unthankful people and evil people? You do if you're, if, you're, if you're walking in the Spirit, don't you? And we can do these things. These, this, this is, he, he asks us to do this because we can. Not, not because it's a test. It's not a test to see if you will. This isn't a test. He gave you the answer. This is, this is the answer. Right? He said, you're the light of the world. This is how you act, light. Amen? Amen. It, it's, you know, p- people always want to, oh, I hope I pass this. Well, I hope you pass this too, but I hope you do this. I don't know what test you're going through, but this isn't a test. It's open book. Yeah. Open the book. Do what's in it. <laughs> Amen? Amen? We can do it. Can you all do it? I can do it. I am believing God every day. I can do it. He says, uh, he's, uh, he's kind to the unthankful and the evil. Then he goes into verse 36 and he says, Be... Merciful, be, th- be you therefore merciful as your Father is merciful. It doesn't say be merciful so your Father will be merciful. He said be like your Father. Your Father's merciful. You don't know how many things in a day He overlooks on you. Right? <laughs> I don't want to see how many things in a day He overlooks on me. I want to see them a little at a time where I can change them so I don't end up in a ball on the floor crying. Amen? Amen. Then he says, judge not so you won't be judged. No, that's not what he said. He says, judge not and you won't be, and you won't be judged. See, too many times we look at it as a so, and the problem with looking at it as a so is the only reason you'll do it is so you won't be judged. You want to do it because you love God. Don't, we got to quit doing things to get something. We'll get everything. But we need to do things because we love God. Right. Amen? Amen? That's got to be our first reason. That's seek ye first the kingdom of God. Loved last week's messages. Did you guys love them? Yep. That's seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's put Him first. And all these other things, they're added to you. This is an add-on. Right? It's, you don't have to do it so you'll get it. You just do it and it happens. And it will be added to you. Amen? It says, judge not, you won't be judged. Condemn not, and you won't be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. <laughs> These are all levels, by the way. Then he goes right into our, one of our verses. Give. And it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. Oh, but see, so you've got to add this last sentence to everything you read. Because there wasn't little verses, little, little, little uh, numbers there when he wrote it. Right? With the same measure that you meet, with all it will be measured to you again. So the same measure of forgiveness that you, you operate in, expect that same measure of forgiveness. If you're holding a grudge against somebody, or if you're refusing to love them or believe God for them or ref- just refusing because you don't think they'll ever change? <laughs> I 
Do we want to go to a different one then? Not forgiveness? Okay. Let's see. Judge. <laughs> you don't want to go there, do you? Guys, we want to be as forgiving as we can be. Why? Because that's a characteristic of God. Not just because you want to be forgiven lots. Right? Because you love much. Yes. Right? Remember the lady? She loved much, forgiven much. Yes. Right? Because she was forgiven much, she loved much. Realize how much forgiveness it took for you. And it took the same amount for everybody. There's not a higher level of forgiveness for somebody else. Well, it only took this much forgiveness for me. But man, for Joe, you're going to take boatloads because that guy needs big forgiveness. No. <laughs> same amount of the blood. What, what we do is we belittle the blood when we refuse to forgive. Because that power forgives anything. Amen? The power of the blood will forgive. And not only does it forgive, it acts like it never happened after that. Right? It don't look back. True forgiveness. As though it never happened. Justified. Never sinned. Glory to God. But, but, but these, are, these are things that the world can't do. You can. I can. Amen? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do these things. Why? Because I want to stand out. I want to stand out. If somebody, if somebody tries to offend me, if somebody tries to get me to hold a grudge, if somebody tries to get me in a place I ought not be, I'm going to work my hardest. To, I'm going to make sure that I stay in the Spirit and I don't fulfill the lust of the flesh that wants to yell at them and wants to be mad at them and wants to begrudge them. I want to, I want to love them and be patient with them and be kind and, and have peace. Amen? I, want, I don't want to lose my joy because of what somebody else did. And in fact, is I want to be so joyful that it flows over onto them. And before I know it, they're saying, Oh, man, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have acted that way. What was I thinking? I'm saying, ah, same thing I used to think. Amen. Right? Yeah. Right? It's not, it's not time to teach them then. It's time to say, Hey, I used to think just that way. I'm growing, brother. Amen? That's what we're about. That, that's how you shine your light. You're going to stand out if you do these things. Right? This is what redeemed people do. Right? And, and you're giving. It's not just giving money. It's giving. You know, people have got a trade mentality. <laughs> well, I want to give because I need it to be given unto me. So I need to give so it will be given unto me. Yeah. That's not giving. No, sir. Giving can't have strings. Giving with strings is trading, right? <laughs> it's like Christmas. Oh, they bought me a gift. Great, now i got to go get them one. <laughs> Why? Did they give you a gift so you would get them one? They even got it where they call it exchanging gifts now. <laughs> That's called trading, <laughs> right? You know what? If you give me a gift, thank you. Okay? <laughs> thank you. I really appreciate it. And if the Lord lays you on my heart, I'm going to get you one. And please don't reciprocate. Yeah. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? Giving. Right? True giving is from the heart. Right? And it, and it knows there will be a return from God, so it's not looking for, for a return from man. Right, right. You've got, you got people out there who have been mad for years. Because somebody didn't send them a Christmas card and they've been sending them one every year. Well, I'm sending them one this year too and we'll just see if they send me one. They're not going <laughs> to. And you're going to have an opportunity to get out of that funk, right? <laughs> yeah, and get in love. And send them a Christmas card because you love them. And you want them to have a good Christmas. Not because you want a card back. What are you going to do with it anyway? Start a fire later? You guys save all your Christmas cards? <laughs> Glory to God. What's it say in Romans 12, 21? Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil... With good. 
Oh, that's it. Everything else we've read, maybe, but this, forget it. If somebody's going to be evil to me, then by golly, I'm going to be mean back. No. How does God overcome evil? With Jesus. That's how He overcame evil in you. It's how He overcame evil in me. It's how He came, overcame evil in the world. And Jesus is the goodness of God. And the goodness of God draws men. It, you know, and the, the verses before says, by, doing, you know, by being good to people, you'll heap hot coals upon their head. And you've got Christians all over. Yeah, I'm going to heap hot coals on them. I'm just going to be good to them. That's not being good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've done that. Okay? Not good. Right? That, that's not what the verse means. Right? It means you can do good. And maybe you can warm somebody up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It means we can overcome evil yeah. with true good. Yeah. True good. Yes. With a truly good heart. A heart of love that refuses yes. to want its own way. To want to see, uh, well, I'm right and I want to make sure they know I'm right. Why? At the, in the end of that, they know you're right. And which really made you wrong. Right? People that have to be right are wrong. Even if they're right. <laughs> it's true. If you have to be right, you're wrong even if you're right. Why? Because you have to be. And so your way of getting to right is so wrong that it can't be right. It's just true. We're the light of the world. The light of the world overcomes evil with good. It, it finds the goodness of God in it. And it does something. It says, okay, God, how can I make this situation better? How can, I, how can I change this circumstance? How can I be a light in my house? How can I be a light in my church? How can I be a light in my job? How can I be a light in the world? I'm going here next week. Let me be a light, Lord. Let me react and act how you would have me to be in every situation that I'd not answer in anything of myself, but always give the answer you give me. Amen? Always make the suggestion. Always do the right thing. Always walk in love. Always have peace. Hold my peace. Leave my peace. Amen? Because I'm your child. Help me to act like you every day. When I leave there, I want people to say, Oh, you act just like your father. Why? Because he overcomes evil with good. Amen? That's how God does it. You got evil? But here's some good. Right? He doesn't say, well, I'll just be mean to them until they can't take it anymore, and they'll be nice. No, because that don't work. Besides that, if God's mean to you, you probably toast pretty quick. I mean, you're probably, you're probably a goner pretty much right there. God don't be mean to people, though. Right? Amen. Ever. Ever. If somebody told you God was mean to them, they're wrong. They may be confused. I'm not going to call them a liar. I'm going to call them confused. Right? God's not mean. Ever. God's not hard. His way is not hard. If it is, I made it hard. And I've done that. Don't do it. I have. Have you guys ever made God's way hard? Why? Because you walked in the flesh trying to do His will. You can't walk in the flesh and do the will of God. Right? It's not possible. Glory to God. We're getting somewhere, aren't we? You liking it? That's because it's good. Amen? Titus 2, and we'll close with it. I think. We'll go back to Matthew 5. First verse we were at after it. My notes are really messed up now. Five fourteen. Actually five sixteen is where we want to be. Titus two fourteen. King James Version. I'll go to thirteen so it makes more sense. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ.
verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify us to himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. He tells you you'll be peculiar and then he tells you why. Because people who are zealous for good works are peculiar. Why? Because it's his good works. It's his way. It's his will. It's his characteristics. It's forgiving your enemies. It's praying for those who despitefully use you. It's loving people you sh- that s- people say you can't love. It's being nice to the th- unthankful. It's being nice to the evil. Kind. Do, kind. That's the word. He's, he's kind to him. What's that mean? It means he does things for him. It doesn't just mean, oh, it's so nice to see you today. That, that's not kind. Kind is doing something, helping somebody. Right? That's kind. That's God's kind of kind. Kind of kind. Amen. You'll be a peculiar person and you'll be zealous for good works, which is what makes you peculiar. Because why? Because you're zealous to shine. You're zealous for people to see God and glorify Him. Right? Not glorify you, glorify Him. Because if you take this very verse back to the first one we read, or one of the first ones we read, right? Matthew five sixteen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see what? Your good works. How are you going to shine? Why are you going to shine? So they can see your good works. So they can see the characteristics of the Father in you. So they can see the goodness and the love of God. And it will draw them. It won't, it won't repel them. If you're operating, even if they get mad and they walk away from you, they'll walk away saying, I don't know why they're being nice to me. I just hate it when people are nice to me. Why are they being nice to me anyway? I've got to go back there and find out. They'll be around you like bees around honey. They will be all over you. Why? They're drawn to it. People want to hear that God's good. They want to know that He loves them. Right? We're not trying to keep it a secret. We want the world to know what we found. And the way they know is good works. Right? And our light shines so that they can see those good works. And it makes you peculiar. And it makes you stand out. And it makes you be something that no one else is in the world. But everything that a Christian ought to be. Glory to God. Can we be this? Amen.